Hello, my name's Alan Boatwright. I am an artist. I go by the name Alan J. On my paintings, I simply sign with a letter A because I feel like the paintings aren't really about me. They're more about the subject. So with that said, uh, when I was young, eight years old, I started painting. I started painting with um, uh, oil pastels, color pencils, and I kept doing it all my life. I never had a job that wasn't art related except for mowing lawns and picking night crawlers. Outside of that, it's all been art related, although I never sold any art as an artist until I was 56 years old. Um, I started, uh, we bought a house here in Florida next to my in-laws so we could take care of them in their latter years and I um, wanted to decorate it with beachy stuff but I didn't want um, palm trees, I didn't want pelicans flying, I wanted something really strange so I decided that what I would do is paint them myself. So I started painting robots lounging on the beach rusting and it took off from there. Um, People always ask me they, why I paint robots, and the answer to me is kind of simple. If I paint a robot, you can't tell me if this is a boy or a girl, if he's a Republican, a Democrat, if he, uh, you can't tell me anything about him, what, what his race is, anything. So it, it removes your ability to prejudge what might be happening here. And most times it's always robots. In this case, there's some humans in here, and I'll tell you why I, chose those in just a minute, but uh, I also number my paintings. So you'll notice there's numbers on the paintings. And um, people ask me about that too, almost every show. They're like, what's with the numbers? Well, the numbers at first were to help me keep track of the order I did them in. Because while I can remember really stupid minutia, I can't remember what painting number 52 was and I might have done it three weeks ago. So. But I can tell you the order I did them in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 57. So this one is painting number 42. And sometimes that number plays a intricate role in the painting. But I don't, like my next painting is number 57. And I don't have a plan, oh, number 57, that's 57 Chevy. They were mainly turquoise and white in my mind, so I'll paint a 57 Chevy. doesn't work that way. I, I tend to um, just roll with it and then it's almost like it just flows out of me and it either matches a number or it doesn't, but I never let the number decide. So in this case, I was gonna paint uh, about the moon men not being the first men on the moon. We got Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong. It's Apollo 11 mission and uh, 42nd painting. And it starts out as a series of jokes about not being the first. And there's no American icon about being the first any more important or memorable than when we stood on the moon. Nobody had stood on the moon. And so that's a very big first. So I spoof that to get to the real point of this painting. And so my paintings, I tend to let the viewer look at it, get it all wrong, and then I like to go in and clean it up for them. And I purposely put things in there to distract them, like Cadillac, the Cadillac emblem, the real rivets, the real Timex watch, um, just to take them totally out of the game of really knowing what's going on. So uh, in this case, Neil Armstrong, uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin arrive on the moon, first men on the moon, but they find that the robots have beat them to it. And they've taken a sample. Well, the robots arrived on the moon moments earlier thinking they were the first on the moon, and they found that these little green men had arrived before them. And if you look here, he's got a sample. So then if you look at the footprints where they're standing, you've got a lot of footprints here, there's, here's one that's way bigger than his foot. And here's a faded one, a little bit older, way bigger than this foot. And in the background, this possibly is a footprint way bigger than all the feet. So if you've got Buzz Aldrin and his stick reflected right here in this part of the helmet, who's this? So they're about to get sampled. And that's where 
the joke lies. But the real story lies in this number, 42, and this logo, Brooklyn Dodgers. Everybody knows that Jackie Robinson was the first colored player in Major League Baseball. He broke what they called the color line and paved the way for uh, black Americans to play baseball just like anybody else. But actually, he wasn't the first. If you go and take 42 and 42 and add them together, this is just a way that I remember things, that equals 84. In 1884, which was 63 years before Jackie Robinson, there was a guy by the name of Moses Fleetwood Walker. And now you know why I have the Fleetwood emblem there. He played 42 games in the major leagues, coincidentally. He batted 236. He caught without a glove. He was a catcher. He, he didn't wear the uh, breastplate either. He often took hits, broke ribs, broke orbital bones, but he hung in there and he was tough. He um, ended up playing just those 42 games and the problem was that up in the audience were slave owners. This is 1884 and they're looking out there going, what's this guy doing? Well, he's batting 236. He's doing great. Um, he's catching without a glove. It's, it's great. And they, what's he doing out there? And there was such confusion and insults being hurled from the crowd. And the, the next year, since he's all broken up and not doing so well, he's, he's playing well, but um, he's a distraction. So they say, eh, don't come back next year. Now, I made $2,000 that year. In 1884, that was a lot of money. But that was the end of uh, Moses Fleetwood Walker, his baseball career. So now let's talk about another person. I've got two astronauts, I've got two robots, I've got two army men, so we can't really just stop with two or one human. We gotta do one more. So let's do Rosa Parks. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks was 42 years old. She sat down on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. It was a segregated bus and she sat in the front row of the colored section. When she uh, sat down, there was one seat beside her and then the two seats across the aisle were taken also by um, people of color. And it was raining and three white people got on the bus and the bus driver got up and he said, you three are gonna have to move back and he moved the sign, the colored people section sign, he moved it back and the other two people complied, got up and stood, but she says, I'm not getting up. And this was the same bus driver that weeks earlier, she had gotten on the front of the bus because that's where you paid. She got on and paid and then she looked and if there's any white people sitting in the white section, you as a person of color are not allowed to walk back that way. You got to get off the bus, go to the back door and come in the back door. So she paid, looked, and he goes, you got to get back off, get in the back. And so she stepped off the bus, he closed the door and drove off, left her standing in the rain. Now the same bus driver has moved the sign behind her and has said, move. She refused. She was arrested. That started the Montgomery bus strike, which then started the um, freedom movement. And she's credited with being the first to do so. But she wasn't the first. Eleven years earlier, it's 1944. We're back to Jackie Robinson. The Japanese had bomb, bombed Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941, and on January 6th. Uh, 1942, Jackie Robinson was drafted into the Army. Now, he was a educated uh, person of color and he was able to, with a little bit of a fight, took about two years, he became an officer. He was a second lieutenant in the Army at Fort Hood in 1944. He got on a bus after a doctor's appointment for an a ankle. He had uh, problems from sports in college with his ankle. And he had it looked at and he got on the bus and he, now this was a segregated bus. Black and white could ride together anywhere they wanted. It was on a military base and the government was not, they did not have uh, unsegregated buses. 
So he was able to sit wherever he wanted, but a guy got on the bus and the bus driver says, you got to move to the back. And he's, he looked around and he thought, I got corporals, privates, sergeants. These are people I'm going to be leading in battle when I get over to Europe in a few weeks. I'm, I'm the head of a, a tank outfit, the Black Panthers, it happened to be. And um, I'm going to lead them into battle and I'm going to say, come on. And they're all going to magically know now that they can do what I say. But here in America right now, this day, I have to go to the back of the bus like a second class citizen. So he, he says, I'm not going to do it. So the bus driver gave up, drove on to the end of the line. And when they got to the end of the line, he summoned the military police over and they arrested Jackie Robinson. He went on trial for insubordination. He, uh, with the help of friends, fellow officers, the NAACP, he ended up getting all charges against him dropped. He was acquitted by an all-white jury of nine men. And they dropped the charges, but he was out of the Army. He got an honorable discharge and he was released from the Army. So now, it's November 1944, the war is almost over, and within a few weeks, it was over and he couldn't find work because everybody came home and they're all taking the jobs. The last person who's going to get a job is a black man that raised a ruckus in the army. So he decided to take a, the advice of a friend and he went on to try out for baseball. He made the team with the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers. He went on uh, to play many, many games for him. He became the highest paid player in baseball history when he retired. In 1961, he was nominated for the Hall of Fame at the age of 42. In 1962, he was actually inducted into the Hall of Fame. In 1972, number 42 was retired from the Brooklyn Dodgers. In 1997, the number 42 was retired throughout all of baseball. So, the next time you hear someone say, this is the first time this has happened, just know that it, it isn't the first. Even the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun in Ecclesiastes 1 9. Excuse me. And uh, for more information on the paintings, go to ironplanetstudios.com and read all you want.